for most home sellers and buyers, doing a back-to-back -back settlement is what people want. What does that mean? That means that the same time you sell your house, you basically turn the funds right over and use them the same day or early the next morning to purchase the house that you are buying. So there's no gap in between. You have the moving truck move directly from one house to the other. You don't have to find extra lodging and it's very tidy and neat. But sometimes for a variety of reasons, it's not possible to do that. So what are some of the things that you need to consider as a home buyer if you can't do a back-to-back -back settlement? One thing you can look into is if getting a bridge loan might enable you to do a back-to-back -back settlement. If you are purchasing prior to when you are settling or closing on the house you currently own and you don't have the funds for the settlement, you might be able to get a bridge loan and that could help. You can also consider whether a rent back would work. If you're selling your home uh, and you settle, but you, and then you have the funds, then you could potentially ask for a lease back from the new owners for let's say two weeks, if then that would give your seller of the new place you're buying enough time. And then you could use, you'd have the funds and you could go to settlement and move directly from one property to the other, even though the settlements themselves were a couple of weeks apart. Another option clearly, which is not a great option in our current market is putting an offer on a property that you're purchasing with a home sale and settlement contingency, which says you can't purchase that other home until and unless you have settled on your current one. Again, in this marketplace, sellers are not looking kindly on those, but it is a possibility. If you can't finagle a way to actually not have to get out of your current house until your new one is ready to move into, there are a few things that you're going to need to think about. The first one is obviously, well, where can you stay? Can you say to friends? Can you say at a neighbor's? Can you say to family members? Can you say to hotel or an extended stay hotel? Airbnb, VRBO, all of those things are options. If you have pets, those options may become limited. So make sure you consider that as well. You also may need to store your furnishings. If you are settling on your house and can't purchase the new one or go to settlement on the new one for a certain period of time, you're going to have to remove your furniture from your old house and have it stored somewhere. There are costs associated not only with the storage, but with moving and unloading and loading the truck twice. So keep that in mind. Finally, there are the logistics of that temporary stay as far as your mail, your utilities, and school and work commutes. Let's say your kids are normally bused to school. If you have to do something for a two week period where you're not they're not able to be picked up at their old bus stop you're going to have to make some kind of arrangements for that so keep that commuting and transportation piece in mind too so again back-to-back -back settlements are usually preferred but they're not always possible and there are a lot of potential complications so think it through very carefully if you find yourself in a situation where you can't go to settlement on one property and immediately use those funds to purchase the next one